Bronco is this? What do we got going on today? Well, 9 o'clock local time. We got Game of Thrones Season 8 premiering. I'm pretty stoked. And I've got a long ways to go. You haven't even started. I haven't even started. But I have HBO now, so we're good. Giggity, 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 go. HBO! Ta -da! So, But in the meantime, something crawled on our desk and almost died. Let's take a look, huh? Yeah. Okay, so... S-Pod, Batman edition. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bantam, powered by S-Pod. So, I'll let Todd do some talking on this. Pretty cool piece. And we'll open it up and show you what's inside. We've kind of already been into it, but everything that came in it is just still there. So, so basically, it's an eight-channel uh, power distribution box. Um, you have a choice of using an LCD touchscreen to control it. And if you get the touch screen with the Bantam or the one step below, I forgot which one was called off the top of my head, but you can piggyback and get up to like, was it 36 channels controlled by one touch screen? Uh, you also have the option of push button or rocker switches. Uh, but if you want to get an extra um, S pod, then you got to get an extra switch bank to go go along with it which is why i went with the well, i'll open it up now um which is why i went with the lcd screen model because that way down the road if i decide i want to um get an extra s pod i can control it with um the one um screen controller that i that came with the kit or I can order it with another one, and I can have the screen in the back of the truck, and I can control both units with both um, screens. Um, it uses a, an Ethernet cable to control it. Um, pretty standard. You can get them at Best Buy, uh, Fry's, or anywhere else that sells computer stuff. Um, what was this, like six feet long, eight feet long, something like that? I think so. Yeah, somewhere between six and eight feet long <clears throat> is what the cord comes with. But if for some reason you need longer ones, you, they're easy to get longer cables. Um, who needs the instructions? We'll get those out of the way. Oh, it comes with some extra decals here so you can uh, list on the S-Pod itself, which slot does what for future references if you ever have to do any diagnosing and the piece of resistance the s-pod bantam itself and um, these things are they come they're advertised as being bluetooth controlled but from what i've read the bluetooth doesn't read very far but it what it's me meant to do is make setting up because you can name individual channels and through your phone, smartphone, and makes makes it easier doing it that way than trying to do it on the LCD controller. Um, there's other features on here where you can uh, forget, where you can lock. Where you can do, there's a voltage protection, so you can set it to where if it, if the voltage drops below a certain point, it'll automatically turn that circuit off. Or there is a way that you can set it up to cancel that altogether. So like when we use the re setup for the battery relay that I have, we can disable the voltage control on that so I can self-jump myself if I ever need to. And then you can also set up to where some 
channels will not function unless it has an input from a different channel that has that is already turned on before. So there's some cool safety features. Yeah. So like if you had two lockers and you wanted to set it up how how war or ARB, ARB would set wants up, you to do it. Yeah. You could have your front locker only work and it would disable the rear locker and then if you hit the rear locker it turns the front locker off. But uh, we don't believe in that here, so no, we're gonna no, uh, no. just let her eat. No. Okay. Yep. So. So now we need to we need to open up the Bronco and see what what's what. Yep. Figure something out. So we'll be we'll, back. We'll, we'll show you the, the nightmare wiring that I've had for the last upteen years. Yeah. So on that note, we'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> So before we begin with the S-Pod shenanigans, uh, Todd's going to drop the gear oil in his front diff. Um, and you guys haven't seen the ARB locker that he has in there now. Yeah, I haven't even got to see it yet. <laughs> Overall, I wasn't too happy with the shop that I had to do it. They, uh, they did a good job with the ARB locker itself. But uh, I think we talked about it in a previous episode where they uh, they had broke like 10 out of 12 screws that held my hubs on all together and didn't tell me and set me down the road and uh, wasn't too happy about that. They they did get me a brand new uh, pre premium hub set, but you know had I. Had I, if I would have went wheeling without seeing that, I would have blown out my hubs. And you would have been... Yep. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yikes, look at that. I'll fix your, uh, your vent hose. I remember the last time in here, I looked and saw it was rotted off. I was like, oh. Look how much easier that is. Oh man, hey look at that. It's the locker. Beautiful. Let me uh, stick your hand in there and see if there's any metally bits. All right, tubes, I'm gonna look at where a good spot to put this S-Pod will be. Knock my soda over. The, we want to put the S pod kind of closer to where the driver would be, so we want to put it on the driver's side and it'll make it a little bit nicer routing stuff to this instead of carrying it over and whatnot. Plus, we don't want to go to Fry's to get a new Ethernet cable. Yeah, that too. That's the other thing we're worried about because you, you're plugging into here and then running to the cab. We don't, we don't want to run the risk of having to get a different cable. And meanwhile, there's this big barnacle that should be taken out one of these days. This looks like all the fuel injection wearing harness stuff. Also needs to be in a sort of a dry-ish location. They are advertised as being waterproof, but... But it also says, keep in dry and clean location. Um... Do, 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 do. See tubes, this is the part of building a rig that they don't show you. <coughs> yeah, motor train. Um, so, you know, this is where I have to figure out where do we want to mount this, you know. Over here is kind of crowded and there's things that we can't really remove yet. So... Fiddlesticks. Check this out, tubes. Look at that new differential cover. I think that's even extra jumbo large. Yeah. And look, now you got uh, external torques. Mm-hmm. Might have a socket for that somewhere. I think I have one. Yeah. So yeah, check that out. Look how thick 
That's what she said. You could you literally could bounce that off a rock and not even phase it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of rock carnage on that original cover. Oh yeah. We'll pull it out, put it in the front yard and examine it a little bit closer. Yeah. Um so I had to move there's a bunch of extra wire harness from when he had the 351 in here. Um, so eventually we go through it and get rid of it. But for right now, I've just tucked a lot of the plugins up right here and just tucked it under this because um, I'm ready to cut that out. Um, so I'm just using the hardware it came with. I just I reused a hole here and then just drilled another here with a small drill bit, like a quarter inch, and uh, bolt it down that way. And I'm gonna move the cables over this way and hide, tuck them under here. They'll go under here. And then our control wire will come from here, and then we'll run down and through a hole and go into the cab. And uh, yeah, it's, that's that. <laughs> um, wiring up the control, the screen, no biggie. Plug the Ethernet cable in, mount it where you want it, you're done. So the rest of it is just going to be, you know, sorting through all of that. Um, so I don't think we're really going to get to that part today. We might save it for later because we, you know, what we need to get. What's that? You need to get a couple spools of, um, let's say, 12 gauge wire. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I'll make new harnesses for everything, and we'll, and then we'll sort through all the wiring. Okay. Because I want to use fresh, a little bit thicker wire. And then we can. I'll run new wires to everything, and then and then then we'll sort through what's no longer used. Yeah. So today we'll get this hooked up, or mounted, hooked up, at least get power to it, and then we can set it up with the phone or whatever, and and um, see how she chooches. May you know, I can I can do this. I can wire your locker to it. We can program that. Yeah, we can do that. Because his locker, the wire for it, is right over here. It's kind of hidden, but we'll uh, dig that out. I'll. Uh, Put a new piece in, we'll find a PID for this, and then uh, that'll be good to go. Alrighty, tubers. So here's the progress here. Got the S pod mounted. So power is running along here. It's kind of loose, they haven't really tied anything up yet. And I extended it with some uh, you know, wire about the same size, and it's running along, and it kind of temporarily is doubled up in one of the positives over there which will, uh, that's all gonna get sorted out. And we're gonna probably end up doing some stuff with some bus bars and use those to um, you know, add the accessories to that rather than doing what we've got going on here. Um, so, power is established, it's hooked up to here. The ground, this, was, this cable is just long enough to run it up behind the booster, over and then to this factory body ground. And then he had this run body ground that used to go to the gas engine, but it was just kind of sitting over here. So I trimmed it down and put an eyelet on it, and, uh, and I'm, I've got it attached right here. And we checked uh, connectivity and, and re re resistance, and we had no resistance and a good solid uh, beep on the meter. Um, and of course we checked it from here right to the negative on the batteries, and we got a good connection. So, um, so now he's got... You know, a nice solid direct body ground, and then another. Um, I got a hard engine. ground from the alternator bracket to straighten yeah. the battery as well. You see right there, <coughs> that goes from the alternator to the body. So it's she's grounded pretty good. Um, yeah, so this thing um, it did kick off one spark when I first hooked it up, so that tells me that it is getting power. I'm about to plug in the cable for it and. Plug, hook up the display and see if it kicks on, but I think we're probably still gonna have to fire it up to. Yeah, it, from what I've seen on other YouTube videos, that the they have to see like 13 volts or 13 and a half or something like that before it'll uh, do the initial fire up. So yeah, so we'll get you guys set up on the tripod. I'm gonna plug the screen in, and we're going to uh, see what happens and show you guys our attempt at setting it up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's alive! It's alive! Oh, it even has 
a, a voltmeter on it. Uh-huh. So yeah, I just needed that initial startup. Now we're, we're good to go. That's cool. So you're like, switch one. Hmm, oh, interesting. Set up. All right, tubes. Did a little decorating, so he said he wanted switch eight to be the front locker, and switch one is gonna be his auxiliary battery, which is that black relay that we'll hook up later. Um, so, let me bring you around. We got kind of a spaghetti harness here, we'll clean up later. It's kind of looped and hoopy duped. Um, but he's got, this is the ARB harness that goes to um, the solenoid connections and the, to turn the pump on. Turn his double pumper right here. So, anyways, I uh, connected up that yellow wire that we got going to the front locker solenoid. Comes around here and I used the supplied uh, connections uh, with this kit. Crimped and soldered that on. We're screwed into switch eight. And it's nice to give you the uh, minus, the negative and positive on here so you can kind of identify it. So that's all we needed. It's grounded elsewhere. So we just needed the power output. So, hang go on. Ahead. Here's his solenoid. And then if you come over to the nifty little screen, go ahead and hit switch eight. So you hear the solenoid? Yeah. Good repeatability. Yeah. So for now, I'm gonna put this on. We got our goal of mounting and getting power to this is done. We at least have one device hooked up and it is working flawlessly. So the next time <coughs> we'll work on sorting through his wires over there. Um, I wanna make new harnesses for his lights so that we can get all that over here in a big bundle. And then everything else, we'll just have to kind of play it by ear and yeah. see what works. But yeah, so this thing's pretty sweet. Oh, oh, and we go to off-road setting here. Okay, let me see, see something funny, guys. <laughs> Can you put it on a straw? Oh my God, turn that off. <laughs> so you you could put these lights on a strobe and really just fuck. with somebody, yeah. <laughs> so I'll go back to setup, switch eight, uh, switch features. I'll disable the strobe and go back. That thing is sweet. All right, okay, I can manually strobe it. So cool, and then. To cancel that, you just go back to on-road mode, and the strobe feature goes away. Oh. Cool. That's... Yeah. Oh, we're, we're stuck. Not anymore. Yep. Oh, shit. We're dug even deeper now. <laughs> or that. <laughs> or that. <laughs> okay, so I took the Ethernet cable, which is right here, and ran it underneath all these harnesses through that harness loom. And he's got this hole that he drilled for other stuff which now will be replaced by the S-Pod. <laughs> and then, come up through the floor. We're gonna, I gotta do a wire tuck here, but I got a harness here. Comes up, well, he's gonna route it how he wants it. And then he's got his phone mount, which that sticks pretty good on there. He's got a phone mount. Now he's gonna use it for this. And so, and then we wanna lock the front diff. Front diff's locked. Check that, check that out, isn't that great? There, it's mounted, done. Yay! All right, so two of I got cables kind of bundled up, and yes, we're gonna clean all that up later. That's, that's the whole point of doing all this. But it's out of the way of his feet for now, because he may move this over to the center of the dash, so we just kind of need everything temporary. But, there you go. She's hooked up. And so now, we, he no longer has to run wires into the cab to hook up switches and stuff. Yep. It is all now under the hood. Uh, all the high amp stuff is under the hood. Under the hood, yep. So, 
go ahead and uh, click that locker. Yep, and then. There's some air pressure in there, but not a lot. Yeah. So now he has a working front locker. <laughs> Reliably working. Yep. <laughs> so that's good. And then, of course, everything else like switch one, we'll then we'll change that over to the aux battery. And, of course, you have those lights and everything, which um, the lights all work, but one of them, for some reason, does not turn on, and we're not getting power from the switch. That one works. And not the center one. It was the center ones, right? Uh, yeah. The center ones don't work, but we manually powered them up and they work, so. We're actually jumping the relay and they yep. work, mm -hmm. but from here it just doesn't work. So, Todd had enough and ordered the S-Pod and. Yeah, because I had this switch bad and then this switch is good. This is for my backup lights, but this switch, well, I don't have the ignition on, but this switch doesn't work reliably. Yeah. And that was controlling the front locker, so. Well, now that one's been retired. And now the S-Pod runs the locker and soon to be many, many, many things. Oh, yes. Well, anyway, Sears, I think that's going to be a wrap, don't you think? Yeah, it's raining. And... Yeah, we didn't quite get to the other thing we wanted to do. We'll do that next time. Yep. Because, well, one of us has to crawl in the, uh, on the Either ground. Either one of us wants to get wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... That'll be that'll be enough of that today. So anyways, tubes, leave comments down below. Comments or don't, whatever. Or don't, or leave criticisms, hate, whatever you want to do. I, uh, I don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't. <laughs> do care. or don't. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Uh. So yeah. And give the video a big like too. Yeah. And big like. Game of Thrones Sunday the fourteenth, nine o'clock local time. Season eight gonna be bittersweet. Yeah. The last season. And rough stuff, you guys should sponsor us. Anyways, um... But before... <laughs> but, but I will say, before the episode airs, my prediction is that the White Walkers will sit on the throne. Anybody who's kept up in the movies, there are no happy endings. So my, my guess is the White Walkers will kill everybody. Well, that's enough, uh... What is it, Pacific Northwest shenanigans? I think so. <laughs> I think so. See you guys later.